Hi there, welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, I am going to show how to prepare landslide susceptibility zonation using MCTM tech. Landslide susceptibility is the likelihood of landslide occurring in an area on the basis of local terrain condition. That's when on the basis of some predictive factors. It predicts where landslide is likely to be occur. So in this tutorial, I am going to show how to prepare the landslide susceptibility generation using MCTM techniques. Actually, MCTM is a generic term for all methods that exist for helping people make decision according to their preference. In case where there is more than one conflicting criteria, so at least we need more than one conflicting criteria, then we can run MCTM model. Using MCDM can be said to be a way of dealing with the complex problem by breaking the problem into smaller pieces. So, after waiting some consideration and making judgment about the smaller component, the pieces are reassembled to present an overall picture to the decision maker. So, most of the MCDM method deals with discrete alternative, which are described by a set of criteria, but we can also use continuous criteria in GIS format. So MCTA method have been designed to designate a preferred alternative, classify the alternative in a small number of category or rank alternatives. In most of the MCTA technique basically we categorize it to five groups like very high, high, medium, low and very low category. So in general MCTM can be categorized into subjective and objective methods. In subjective methods, the way of each indices is determined based on the opinion of expert, while the objective methods weight of indices is calculated based on the natural distribution indices. So in this tutorial, I am going to show how to prepare landslide susceptibility generation using weighted overlay MCTM technique. Weighted overlay is a subjective method, so uh, is a knowledge based system. So, we need about the impact of each parameter. Weighted overlay is work as a overlay several luster using a common measurement scale and weight of each according to their importance. So, we need to know the importance of each parameter. By literature review, we can determine the weight. So, we have published one paper uh, based on this study area. This is upper Tista Basin. Mm -hmm. So, this is a landslide susceptibility generation. So I will use this criteria like which I have used in this paper. Already I have shown how to prepare this paper in the previous lecture. So you can watch out like elevation, slope, aspect, then curvature, roughness, SPI, TWI, distance to stream, distance to road, then uh, NDVI, LOLC, then landfall, then modified Fourier index, lithology. I have considered this parameter to prepare the final model like here and I have categorized into five groups like this. This is FR model. You can see here very high, that's in very high landslide susceptibility generation, then high, medium, low and very low. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show how to prepare this five classification system landslide susceptibility generation, right? So, for this purpose, already I have considered this parameter, I have prepared this parameter and reclassify it. Already I have shown it, you can watch out my tutorial. So, here model builder, we can easily use the model builder for preparing this parameter. So, here you can see add data. So, we can consider parameter by add data like this way, like here. These are the reclassified parameters here aspect, curvature, distance to river. So I'll upload one by one. First one aspect, then second one curvature, then third one distance to river, then distance to road, then distance elevation, one of important parameter, then lineament then LOLC, then modified Fourier index, then NDVI, then rainfall, then roughness index, 
slope another important parameter slope spi then twi so now i will arrange it like this way twi spi slope then roughness index rainfall then ndpi ndpi then rainfall then lolc lineament elevation distance to road distance to river then curvature then aspect now i will add here weighted overlay technique we can find this weighted overlay technique in our toolbox then special analysis tool here the weighted overlay technique right so just select it and drop it here then it will be select like this way weighted overlay technique we can jack and drop anywhere like i will drop here weighted overlay technique or you can select it and paste it here right so now one by one this is the connector we can connect it like ndvi weighted overlay then aspect weighted overlay then roughness then slope then spi then twi then rainfall then elevation then distance to road then distance to river curvature then mfi then lolc then lineament so now we can change it here the weighted overlay right we can change it the location here if you double click over there just double click over there and change it like landslide susceptibility donation dot pif just we have to change it this one landslide susceptibility donation dot tif tif is extension if we use raster data then click it okay right now we have to click over there we have to check it this influence and then scale this most important part see first of all we will categorize this landslide susceptibility donation into five groups like this paper okay very high high low uh, medium like this see here very high high medium low and very low so there are five groups so i'll change it to five class so here the evolution scale we should change it according to our needs so i will change it to five group one to five by one see this one one to five by one just change it this one then another thing this influence the sum of all influence should be must be equal 100 so we can say the equal influence see now equal in influence here seven according to our parameter this is equal important seven but we can change it according to our needs right so if we follow any published paper like you should follow at least 10 paper and prepare your parameters see here the elevation importance of elevation weight here 48 percent then slope 22 percent then aspect only 0.07 okay so it's a very low impact 
here only 2 percent here 10 percent roughness 10 percent but curvature is only 2 percent so aspect very less important so we can remove also then here spi uh, then 12 percent twi is uh, less important like 5 percent then distance to steam is important parameter 15 percent then distance to road it is most important parameter one of most important parameter 25 percent then NDVI 25%, then LOLC 17%, then rainfall 14%, then MFI uh, 5%, then lithology 18%. So according to these weightage, so we can, because it's a knowledge base, we have to uh, assign the weightage according to this importance. Okay, so now it's equal importance, so according to will change like most one of most important parameter here this is a least least important parameter so we'll assign value one okay then ndvi it is medium so it's i will assign here five ndvi roughness seven is okay then slope seven is okay spi it is least important parameter so five TWI also least important parameter, so I'll assign here 2, then rainfall, it is 7 is okay, elevation most important parameter, so instead of uh, 7, I'll assign here 15, so then distance to road, so it is also important parameter, I'll assign here 11, then distance to river, I'll assign here 10, then curvature is a least important parameter, so here LSN 4 then MFI it is also list of important parameter so I will assign 6 LLC I will assign here 8 then lineament LSN 7 okay now see here 95 percent it should be some of these should be 100 percent so again I revise it you will prepare it in excel sheet then it will be easy for you to assign the value like slope is important parameter so 8 then twi is okay for me uh, this one i will give it 8 97 elevation okay distance to road so i will increase here 12 then here distance to stream it is one of important parameter so this one 12 also or I can give you 11 and here 13 okay now 100 percent okay now next part is that to select the scale one by one we have to select the scale see this NDVI here and check it here NDVI this is value assigned here one scale one so lowest value uh, if you categorize your parameter like in two way like one beneficial parameter another non-beneficial parameter what is beneficial parameter beneficial parameter are those parameter who is if value is increased then occurrences will be increased so in case of ndvi is ndvi value is increased then occurrence will be decreased so this is a non-beneficial criteria in case of non-beneficial criteria we can assign value like this way this is five so we will assign value here one because it's a non-beneficial criteria so then two then this one three then this one four okay next one aspect so now aspect this is less important parameter only one person so here also first one uh, aspect means slope aspect so first one first category and last category both are same so according to our judgment we will assign this um, field value then roughness, if roughness increase, then occurrence of landslide also increase. So this is a beneficial criteria. So we will assign value like instead of 3, we will assign here 5, uh, this one 4, then this one 3. Right? Then this one slope, it is also beneficial criteria. If slope increase, then occurrences will be increased. So this one 4. By literature review, we can categorize your parameter. A, it is beneficial criteria or cost criteria spi it is also a beneficial criteria 
then see then twi it is also a beneficial criteria if topographic weightness increase then occurrence of landslide will be increased in some cases if we work with landslide landslide uh, it may be a beneficial criteria in other case in case of flood it may be non beneficial criteria depending on your target so rainfall definitely if rainfall increase then occurrence of landslide will be increased so it is also beneficial criteria so i'll use accordingly so this on three two one right elevation so if you read this paper like elevation see here lower elevation lower elevation here see importance high 5.57 or you can see here 5.587 okay then it is decrease so we'll assign value like this way see the class value see here the class value 5 4 3 2 1 like this way so we'll assign value just opposite 5 4 C 2 1 then distance to root it is also beneficial criteria no it's a non beneficial criteria if distance to root is increased then occurrence of landslide will be increased so it will be opposite like 5 4 3 2 then 1 distance to river this also non beneficial criteria so 5 4 3 2 1 then curvature you can see here the category of curvature here see 0 0.84 18 percent 23 percent 20 percent then 16 percent then 10 percent so we can say it is a non-beneficial criteria so this one 5 4 3 2 one this is also one there are six groups okay then mfi if mfi increase it's a beneficial criteria if mfi value increase then occurrence of landslide will be increased so it is a beneficial criteria we will assign value accordingly then lolc we should check it carefully about the uh, this on water body see water body 33 percent then vegetation cover 196 agricultural land 0 bare ground 0 0.64 build up area 0.27 then snow cover so we will assign value highest value for build up area so 1 2 3 4 5 so number 5 here number 5 build up area we will assign value highest this one then we will assign value this is water body we will assign for 4 then vegetation cover we will assign value list like 1 then this one bare ground then snow cover we will assign value 2 then 3 this is also 3 and 5 so we can assign value like this way then lineament it is also a beneficial criteria 5 4 then 3 right now we have assigned all parameter now click it okay just save it first save your model first you have to save it your model in your toolbox so you can save it here landslide okay now see everything is okay just go to this model and run entire model 
See, it's done. So now you can add it here. We save it landslide. This one LHZ. See, there are four groups. One, two, three, four, four groups here. So we can categorize like this way, classify it or unit field. Flip this color. This area is the highest and this area shows lowest. And so now here see two part. One is data view and another is layout view. For preparing the map, we should select layout view, this one. Then select this. This is full extent view. Now right click and go to properties. Then change to this grid system. Now select new grid. Next, 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 finish. And OK. Now accordingly, we can modify this properties. Select this properties and here size you can change to size 14 left and the right orientation is vertical and another in interval here we can change interval 10 here we can change to 20 20 and instead of line we can select do not show line or ticks just click it Okay, now see this is our map. You can change it this layout. Go to insert and here not arrow, select anyone according to your choice. Now place your not arrow, then again scale bar, choose anyone here, scale bar, then insert legend. Select next, 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 and finish. You can write here this is high, then moderate, then low, then very low moderate now select it go to properties style and just you can select this level or you can say layer name and level then font size at least 14 Click it okay. This is a pen tool. You can now use this pen tool like this way. Change this. You can change it kilometer to Kimi. Then format. You can increase font size here 10 to 14. Right now, go to file and export this map LSZ resolution 600. Select it now. Go to desktop LSZ and here. Edit and change it. Save a copy. Next up, LZ two or one. Now see this is our final map. If you want to learn the advanced model, then you can join our course. This is obviously paid course here offered by advances in geographical research. 
you can see here one code here the course system then you can find this course an ensemble of evidence with a function with frequency ratio for GIS based landsat prediction in Excel and ArcGIS. I have shown here how we can prepare the scenario, seven scenario based on EBF and FR model. It will start from understanding the EBF and FR, then how to select study area, data acquisition, calculation of EBF, calculation of FR, then preparation of EBF model, preparation of FR model, then ensemble of EBF and FR, then model validation and final preparation for publication. Already I have published many papers based on these techniques. So I hope you can also publish paper using this technique. Best part is that if you need any one-to-one -one session, then I will support you in live one-to-one -one session. It is a lifetime access. If you join, then you can access this course lifetime. Thank you for watching this tutorial.